Hello, Cinema Makeup School students, friends, and family. We've been apart for I don't even know how long now, but I'm excited to see you guys again, and I know our teachers are excited to see you again as well. So today, as my guest, I have one of our very own CMS instructors, and she's a makeup artist, she's an educator, Heather Peppy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, I'm so excited. It's such a pleasure. Thank yeah, you for having me. And hi to all of you students out there. We miss you and we're in the same boat as you guys. But so hi, we miss you. And hopefully we will be back together soon. But in the meantime, yeah. let's learn a little bit about you and your career. Talk to me about that. How did you get started in makeup? I always felt like I was lucky because uh, early on I knew when I was in high school and I realized for the first time, I remember not knowing that makeup artistry was something you could do for a living. And then somehow I realized you could do it as a job. Like there was movie makeup artists and there was makeup artists that were doing these makeup and these fashion magazines. And I was like, ever since I realized it was a profession, I felt like that was literally the only thing I could imagine doing. I went to makeup school after high school and then got into just kind of slowly working my way in the industry. Um, and I started doing makeup for film and TV when I started. Um, and it seemed like all the makeup artists that I was meeting were in that kind of world of film and television. Um, so I assisted a lot and I learned a lot. And then a couple of years into my career, I think it was about five or six years into my career, decided to totally switch and focus on beauty and fashion and cosmetics. And um, it totally was like starting a new industry. Like it was different people, different contacts, different set etiquette different, everything, everything was different. So, um, you know, it was kind of like starting all over. And then I, um, you know, worked with cosmetic companies. Now through my career, like I still work with, in television. Um, I'm not a union though. I've never been a union artist. So, um, you know, that's kind of one of the things I've been on the fence over. Um, I've had times where I could join it, but I just never did. The movie lifestyle, I feel like, with those hours and stuff and like the dedication that it takes is like, I just felt like it, I don't, I don't know. It was, it was a lot. So I kind of do a little bit of everything. I work with CNBC, they're one of my big clients. Um, I work with, you know, do a lot of commercials, you know, travel the world, speaking about makeup, doing education. So I kind of have experience, a vast experience, I feel like, as a makeup artist, doing editorial, print, red carpet, bridal, you know, film, TV, a little bit of everything. So. Yeah, and that's something that's so great about this industry, and I really want the students and the aspiring artists to realize there's so many lanes you can be part of in the makeup industry. So totally. if being on set for 12 hours a day, 26 hours a day, which happens and is not for everyone, that's okay if that's not for you. There's other places where you can still use your skills. So I'm glad Absolutely. that you highlighted that. Well, I feel like it's important because, you know, I think when people, especially nowadays, a lot of people get into this industry maybe for different reasons or only validating their success by like who they've done or who they do and not looking at like who's actually making money and working all the time and having a steady income coming in and, ha and actually working doing makeup. So I feel like, you know, there's so many makeup artists out there that don't get credit, but they're hardworking and they're dedicated and they're passionate and they're, you know, becoming successful makeup artists. We just don't care about their names. You know, and I feel like that's something that people forget about in this industry. Like there's a lot of, you know, you don't have to be doing top movies and winning Oscars to be a, a, a good makeup artist. You know, there's, there's a little, there's room, you know, all different facets of this industry that one can specialize in or kind of have their fingers in. Yeah, that's great because you can, you can find your place. And it is important to try different things. Like you said, you started trying some TV and film and then you moved over to beauty and editorial and things like that. But it's important to test those things out. Exactly, definitely. Good, are there any gigs that you had that were particularly significant to you? Well, I, you know, I've had a, a couple. Um, I feel like my one that really, it was my first one assisting on like a big job. So it was like assisting and I got the, I got the call um for from a friend um like a referral it was for a w magazine shoot and it was my first like really big you know assisting like a big makeup artist and there was a lot of assistance on set so it wasn't like i was personally assisting this one artist um and it was a really big makeup theme and they had all different makeup artists there and stuff doing different makeup and i remember just seeing like that was really and it was all these different makeup artists I didn't know doing fashion and they were all delivering such amazing work and they're all working artists, but they were all 
assisting. And I thought, you know, that, and then that's when I realized like in the fashion world, in that world, like I feel like it was a big moment for me realizing, because I've always, you know, I wasn't working enough. I always thought all these things, but it really helped me to realize like there's all these great artists out there. Artists signed with the wall group assisting just like I am. And it's like, you kind of like in this business, it's all about, you know, just working and understanding. And I think that really helped me to, you know, not be so hard on myself for just assisting on jobs. You know what I mean? At a point in my career, some people think like they're better than that, but I feel like in this industry, you can't have an ego when it comes to things. So I feel like that job was really significant because it changed the whole way I looked at my career. And then once I had more confidence in where I was at as an artist, that helped propel my career. And then going forward, I had, you know, I think it really just is like a state of mind because I feel like a lot of things with artists struggle with is how you perceive yourself as an artist and that affects how you work. You know, people don't realize that there's a lot to this business um, because you are your own employer. You're selling yourself. So it's all about how, you know, if you don't have the confidence that you could do certain jobs, you're not going to do that. I think that was an important one, but I also, can I tell you one more? I have yes. another one. It was for CNBC. who was one of my contacts. And they were, um, you know, it was an interview and they called me and they booked me, didn't know anything. And they were asking for all this information that normally they wouldn't ask for. And I thought it was kind of strange. They just told me it was like in two days and they needed to know right now if I could do it. And I had to fill out this paperwork and then I did. And then they got back to me and like, okay, you're good. We're hiring you. Do you know who it's like? And then it was another guy I was talking to and he's like, did he tell you who, like what it is, the job is? And I was like, no, I just know it's two men for an interview. He said, well, one of them is the president of the United States, President Obama. And I almost died. And I was actually super nervous. And, and you know what I mean? Like even jobs, you know, it was, I, you get a little nervous, but that I was like butterflies in my stomach, almost too nervous to talk because it was such a surreal experience with all the bodyguards and the security people and the clearance and it was crazy. So that was another one. That one, I, that one I felt like, okay, that was pretty cool. Like there was nobody more important in the world than the president of the United States at the time. It was pretty awesome. What an amazing story that is. That's come up with uh, another one of my guests was talking about how she put her name in the hat for a job and she didn't know who it was for. They got the clearance and it uh, was Barbara Walters. And oh. she was just like, oh, and it was like one of her first jobs. <laughs> Oh my God. I would be so nervous if I was doing Barbara Walters for one of my first jobs. Yeah. But you know, that's so great because you put your name in the hat, you take the jobs, you keep working, yeah. you stay humble. As you can see, as we've seen through multiple of these interviews, it's not like they're looking for the superstar, highest, biggest, most followers person to do the makeup for these high profile things. They're looking for someone who's good and professional exactly. and can clear a background check. I can clear a background check. Very important. Yeah. So you are working on a project called Beauty Before. It's an Instagram account where you are talking about like the history of makeup and references in makeup history, pop culture, and artistry, which I think is amazing. Uh, tell me about how that came to be, because I have a little bit of an idea, but I'd like to hear what you have to say. I actually been teaching at Cinema Makeup School for the past couple of years. Um, I really started teaching period makeup and delving into the history of makeup more than I ever had before. And I've always known my references and, you know, not every reference, um, but, you know, I, I'm constantly learning as an artist. There's so much um, out there. And um, I just kind of realized, like, when going through books and when I would teach the history of makeup, it would be really, there's just a couple books out there that are, like, on the history of makeup. And there are some really great books. Like, there's, you know, Classic Beauty by Gabriela Hernandez. It's amazing. There's Face Paint by Lisa Eldridge, which is another one that's, you know, amazing. Those are two of my favorites. There's so many others, um, but there's not that many, actually. And I feel like there's nothing that really talks about beauty and pop culture um, and how much the two are tied together. So something that's always kind of been in my mind, like my kind of recent obsession with like history and makeup and beauty references and pop culture. And then during this quarantine, I thought I need to be doing something. So I remember I took out all of my stuff to do face charts and I had it on my makeup station. It just sat there and I was waiting for the, cause I need to be inspired. I don't know. Like I feel like most artists, you need to have be inspired by something and either it's somebody's face or a project or a theme, but I just could not find inspiration. 
and I've never really been inspired by my own face. So doing make, and I'm really sensitive skin. So doing makeup on myself is not really like fun for me. <laughs> so I was like, I need to do something that's makeup related because I'm going to lose my mind. And then I realized I took my, you know, kind of passion for makeup education. And I was like, you know what? There's no, there's not that many things out there that are kind of like this and focusing on important makeup references and symbolic, like, you know, people in history, like iconic people, because I feel like our industry now, the makeup community is so much bigger than it was. And our industry, you know, if you think about fashion makeup artists, they've only been around since the seventies. Like really, there was no fashion editorial makeup artist really before that. I mean, that's crazy to me. Our industry is not that old. Um, you know, movie makeup artists. I mean, again, some of the first makeup artists are from film. So there's a huge tie with the film and pop culture. So I decided to start this Instagram and I'm actually just um, starting a blog too, because my posts, when I'd be doing my research on certain subjects, um, I find so much incredible information that it's really hard to kind of narrow it down for an Instagram post. Um, but I just think it's important to get out education, all these, um, you know, young makeup artists that, you know, are surf searching for inspiration and references, you know, being part of what we do is all about knowing your references. And there's, unless you're delving into it personally, and like, there's so many avenues you can go down, it's kind of hard to find like one place you can kind of go to. So I wanted to kind of create that. And slowly but surely, I'm, you know, each post is about um, either dedicated to a makeup artist from either film, um, you know, an iconic makeup artist from film or fashion, uh, hairstylists, photographers, fashion photographers, uh, subcultures, or, um, you know, beauty trends historically, um, you know, significant beauty icons, um, women or men that we, you know, pull from inspiration from. Um, and so each post that I do, um, when I pick a specific subject, I'm doing tons of research. So I'm not just like throwing it together. I'm really delving in and there's so much false information on the internet. Let me tell you, it's really hard to like find a ton of proper information about what shoots they did, where they were credited, what they weren't credited for. It's quite interesting, but it's really fascinating. It really is because I've been doing these interviews now. This this series was also born out of the quarantine. And so as, as I'm talking to all these makeup artists and realizing their stories aren't told and that's just who we can access now. So even if you go back further, like you're going historically, I'm not surprised because a lot of makeup artists are specifically choosing to be behind the camera and not be highlighted and not have the spotlight on them. So the information's a little bit hidden, but the way that you're doing it, I think it's so great because you will show a style or a trend through decades you've got references, you've got information, and, and and that's the kind of thing that artists, if you're following this, if you're a makeup artist, you should definitely follow the account because you might, something will pop up and you're like, oh, that's why we look at brows like that. Yeah, yeah. That's why yeah. this is an iconic look because it came before. It wasn't because the latest hot person on Instagram did it. They didn't make that up. That came through. His exactly. And you know, I feel like even, I mean, if you look at some of the greatest makeup artists, in the world, like Pat McGrath, for example. I've been a fan of Pat's since, I mean, as long as I can remember, like, you know, when she was back, when she was, when I was looking at her stuff in like Italian Vogue, you know, like, I mean, she was always an amazing icon. She's incredible. If you look at the makeup that she did for, um, like with all of like for Galliano, when he was with Dior, for those most iconic fashion shows that we see when you type in Pat McGrath makeup, well, you know, maybe now makeup, her makeup line comes up, but all those images, those great images from their days together at those fashion shows are the ones that pop up. And you can, if you know your references, like about pop culture, you can see where she pulls in, in, those inspirations from. She's done makeup multiple times where it's been Lee Bowery inspired. And if you know who Lee Bowery is, because you know your makeup references, you can pinpoint it. And you can see it's not that she's stealing from him, but it's like, when you start to know your references, you start to see how important it is in everything we do. Like you said, like, I mean, even the great makeup artists, you know, I mean, so many eyebrows you can see that were inspired by, you know, Greta Garbo because of her eyebrows, you know, that most, and people 
you know, it's important to know where it was rooted from, I think, you know, and it's, you understand, but it's like a lot of people don't know that. They just think, oh, those are amazing eyebrows. Oh, those are, you know, they're great. But it's like, you need to know the story and how fascinating it is when you actually do know the story of where they all kind of came from. Because, you know, I mean, if you think about pop culture, since the beginning of film really is where I kind of focus on, um, you know, the early 1900s really, and then going into film, because it's, it's about pop culture references as well. So it's not, you know, and I, I'm, what I'm also doing current things that I think like makeup artists and stuff, maybe that are still alive, you know, um, and, you know, I, like I said, I only have so many posts now, but I'm just kind of starting it. And, um, you know, I have plans of developing it and making it even, you know, more vast. And I think all makeup artists and hairstylists and even fashion photographers, I feel like, you know, need to know their references. Like directors or photographers will just throw out a reference at you. Like, you know, like uh, Guy Bourdin, for example. You know, you can be on set and the photographer's like, I'm thinking more like, you know, maybe a Guy Bourdin vibe. And if you don't know who Guy Bourdin is, are you going to say, uh, what? You know, like, you know what I mean? You don't want to be that person on set that doesn't know who Guy Bourdin is. You don't want to be that person on set that doesn't know the difference between, you know, the disco 70s and the glam of the 80s. You need to know your references. I really try to credit everybody involved in whatever I'm talking about. So if I can find who the photographer is in the images that I do, or if I can find, you know, it, um, and that also takes up so much time too, because I feel like a lot of the time makeup artists and hairstylists aren't credited enough for their contribution to you know, some really important styles and trends in, you know, history and pop culture. It's good. You're playing homage to the the history of your industry, which I think is important. Like we have to know our history because then you can build upon it. Like you can see things you're like, oh, great. I like this plus put your spin on it. And that's how things develop and evolve. So where are you hoping that this goes? I'm hoping to develop it into something that's, you know, um, a, a just a, a source for makeup artists to go to that has a ton of information. I would like to do videos as well, and kind of just really focusing on the history of makeup and beauty references and pop culture and how, um, in all forms, like I would like to have even, you know, demos by some artists on recreations. Um, you know, I mean, there's some of the greats too, like the fashion makeup artists from the 70s, like Sandy Littner, for example. I mean, she's alive and, and out there and still working and, you know, doing amazing things. And, you know, a lot of people don't even know, like, how incredible she was in the whole 70s disco movement. Like, having somebody like her, if I could ever get her to do a demo of, like, a recreation of, you know, one of her makeups. Like, I just, I would love to kind of develop it into something where it's about, um, you know, makeup, artistry, passion, and and you know where it all began and giving credit I feel like and understanding and appreciating um this industry that we're in our industry has only been around for you know the f I mean not it's not it's not that old if you think about it lawyers doctors they've been around forever makeup artistry I mean there was hairstylists but there wasn't really professional makeup artists um you know doing a lot of things until you know like I said I mean with the birth of film and that was kind of slow and then it was in fashion it wasn't until you know really the 70s that it kind of took off I mean there was some fashion makeup artists in the 60s but it was you know so it's a very new industry and I feel like it's something that needs to be you know talked about more yeah what an amazing resource so I can't wait to see that fleshed out and you guys should definitely definitely follow it on Instagram it is beauty underscore before underscore I'll make sure there's a link to that as well and if there's anything historically or references or certain styles that you're interested in hearing more about leave a comment on that page and Heather will help you get that information I'm all for if there's somebody specific that you, you know, people are interested in or because there's so many out there. I mean, I have a whole list, but I'm just kind of going as what day I'm inspired to look up somebody. You know what I mean? Like it's all kind of like pick and choose, right? Who I, what I'm choosing to focus on. Very good. And I'm so glad that you found something to work on and be productive with during quarantine because we, we don't know when we're going to be able to get in people's faces again, right? It's still in the air. It's very strange. So weird. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's very weird, but we're all in this together. So if you're yeah. at home and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to my life? We're all feeling like this. So yeah. everybody is, it's, it's a strange time, but it will, it will pass. It will just like, you know, we just have to kind of write it out. We have to write it out. And it's, yeah. it's just for the period of time that it is. So I really hope that you guys are at home and you're staying productive and you are finding things. Now is a great time to be doing research on the history of your industry. And this is a great resource for you. Yes, and before we go, do you have any advice or words you would like to say to the students that you haven't seen in so long? Oh, well, I miss you guys all. And, um, you know, just stay inspired, try to. I know it's hard and I know it's hard to, you know, everybody's going through such weird times. Um, but like I said, you know, I found my way of like, I couldn't do makeup on myself. That wasn't where my inspiration was. Couldn't do face charts. I found, you know, delving into education more. Use the time, you know, don't feel bad because you don't want to do makeup on yourself or somebody else because you feel like just, you know, but stay in the realm of a makeup artist. Stay in that mindset. Educate yourself and be positive. Hopefully this will be over soon and we'll be back to normal and you'll be so grateful that you use this time wisely if you could <laughs> very good well thank you so much for joining me heather i appreciate it if you guys are enjoying these or if you're working on something at home let me know in the comments i'd love to hear what everybody else has been up to during this time where we haven't been able to be together and i will catch you guys in the next one thank you so much bye